Hi there, this is Sherry Lee Myers. Welcome to How to Connect with Angels. We believe that no matter what, every person has the unconditional love and help of angels, our messengers from God. But we have to be willing to believe and we have to be willing to ask. That's what our film, The Glitch, that we are shooting here in New Orleans is all about, with the help of some amazing music and talent. If you're curious, visit us at theglitchmovie.com and take a look. But now, right now, let's talk to someone who's devoted to helping us make a divine connection. Anne Albers is an author, spiritual instructor, angel communicator, and mystic. She delights in distilling heavenly wisdom into practical tools to help us connect with our angels and create heaven on earth. She communicates with an international community of thousands via her newsletter called Messages from Anne and the Angels, as well as her internet series, Anne and the Angels. Hey, Anne. Oh, it's just so great. We've finally, finally got a chance to talk to you. Um, everyone, Messages from Anne and the Angels is a beautifully written, very practical um, down to earth and heavenly newsletter at the same time. And I'm going to really encourage you to take a look at that. Um, now, Anne, though, you also have TV series, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's an internet TV series. And at first we live streamed it and now it's available as video on demand. Mm -hmm. And, um, there are various different series, but the first series is 12 episodes. It's called getting to know your angels. It's called the Anne and the angels show. Okay. First series of 12 episodes is getting to know your angels. And they're, half an hour episodes you can do them at your leisure you can watch with your whole family or your entire spiritual group you know we've had people in like um you know meditation groups watch together oh that's and, a great uh, idea how long are they Anne? half an hour each and there's okay. 12 okay and they're segmented so that you could watch one at a time at random or you can watch them in a series and i teach people not just how to get in touch with your angels because there's so many different ways but also how to work with your angels because you know for example if if you have a dog, you can't think of them like a human. You have to, you know, go see the dog whisper and learn how dogs think. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a relationship, you probably want to read Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Mm -hmm. But if you work with angels, you've got to understand that they think differently than we do. Oh, and that's the first time I've ever heard it explained to me that way. Thank you so much. Keep well, going. Right. Keep going. Okay. Because, for example, human beings... We try, but the truth is we love conditionally. Yes. You know, the truth is we think we have to earn love. And so people come to my office. What, what really started me on this track was that people come to my office and they say, oh, my angels must be disgusted with me. They must have left, you know, ah. <laughs> I've been meditating or I haven't, you know, I've been mad at my ex or whatever it is. And, and the angels say, no, not at all. We love unconditionally. We're here no matter what, because I find that people get into this space of, they don't have a, a feeling of self-worth if they don't. Right earned it right and so they don't always go to their angels if they're not feeling worthy of it this is where your movie comes in yes because the woman in your movie as i understand it you know is is you know off the charts in terms of not feeling like she deserves it probably. she's punishing herself for making mistakes and Definitely. therefore doesn't believe for an instant that she deserves an angel and that's mm -hmm. what i love about your material is that you at the heart of it there is this incredible stand for self-love oh, that I see that is so incredibly, incredibly important. Can I take a sidestep here for a minute? And mm -hmm. will you tell us a little bit about what was going on in your life that you opened up to the angels in the way that you did? I did. Um, now, I grew up, just a little background, I grew up Catholic, and when I was a, a child, we had the angel prayer, you know, guardian angel, <laughs> you know, come mm -hmm. be at my side. And I imagined they were there with me. I had a, an extremely vivid imagination that I now think really was me tuning into the other realm. Sure. But I imagine them there. And I, and I remember in high school being a bit of a lonely kid because I was different. I didn't want to gossip and chase boys and all that. Mm -hmm. So I would talk to my angels and I would imagine they were there. I didn't really know, but I felt comforted. Mm -hmm. So what finally catalyzed this whole spiritual journey was that I had done everything right. I got a job. I graduated from the University of Notre Dame with a degree in electrical engineering, which sounds fancy. 
got a job in the avionics industry, mm -hmm. you know, was married. I had everything you were supposed to have, and I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And so I started praying, and I said, God, whoever, whatever you are, you know, I think I know what you are, but I don't know for sure. I just want to wake up happy, go to bed grateful, and make a living helping people. That's ah. all I knew. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what mm. I was good at. I didn't, I did, I, I had been such a dutiful little girl, you know, <laughs> that mm -hmm. I don't think I know who I, I knew who I was. So I prayed. Now, books started falling off the shelves. Yes, yes, you said that in your bio. I love that. I love that. What happened? <laughs> well, at first there were books on shamanism and, and uh, women who had studied Native American philosophies, and it fascinated me, you know, so I read it like stories. Um, these were the books, uh, some of the earlier books that fell off the shelf were by Lynn Andrews. Mm -hmm. And I was totally unfamiliar with her, so I read those. And then I went to a bookstore one night, and I was looking at the section on angels, which back then was about this big. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for the people who are not watching, because this is audio. Yes. Okay. That's about six inches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, yes, it was very tiny. And I remember picking up an angel book and looking at it and thinking, it's oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And I heard in my head, a voice in my head saying, buy the book. Uh, it was a stubborn little thing. I said, I've got enough books to read at home. So I put it back and I heard by the book. And I thought, you know what? Maybe someday. And I turn around and I tripped and I went <laughs> flailing, flailing. And I went I'm to sorry. grab anything I could grab. And I grabbed the book and it <laughs> fell and it flipped open to a page. <gasps> and you can ask the angels for help with career and finances. Wow. Chew the twilight zone. You know? <laughs> so, wow. That That's it. exactly where you were in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I bought the book and I'm looking around <laughs> hoping no one sees this engineer buying an angel book because I was too important to look at such you know, crazy things. And too important, too smart, right? Yeah, yeah. ego to hear. And um, I went home and I did the meditations in it, went for basic and... I thought to myself, well, that's nice, but I'm just getting peaceful. And again, that's ridiculous. I was a type A stressed out engineer working, you know, 70 to 90 hour weeks and I just got peaceful. Uh-huh. But that somehow that wasn't quite enough, huh? Oh, no. I wanted Moses in the burning bush, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I kept it up. And the coincidences started happening in my life. I love it. You know, yeah. People that yeah. I, I didn't even know would drop a flyer off on my desk of a spiritual class. I thought you might be interested. They had no way of knowing. Mm. You know, I saw dreams and coincidences and spiritual teachers showing up. And it just went on and on. And, and finally, I was journaling because I, I have a journal I type in because <laughs> I can't write fast enough to keep up with the brain. So I'm typing in my journal and I felt this beautiful presence come over me. Wow. And... I started going into a visionary state and I would start asking this presence questions and I would type out the answers. Not like it took over my fingers, but it was just almost like I would get this stream of information coming through me. And right. it was a beautiful spiritual education that I look back on and I realize, like, wow, you know, this isn't stuff I learned in a book. Voices came in my head um, months later and, and I'd been praying and praying, when do I quit engineering? What do I do? Sure. I heard loudly turn in your resignation tomorrow <gasps> and I'm bawling. I can't do it tomorrow. I look in the bank. I had been shoving overtime money in my savings account. I had a hundred dollars more that night than I had said I would need before I quit. Yeah. I hadn't even been looking. So I'm bawling and scared and shaking, but I did it. Yes. And I gave six weeks notice and yes. never looked back. And I was wow. just guided one step after the next after that. And was it scary? Yeah, because <laughs> I went from a nice, large engineering salary to working as psychic in the window of a bookstore where I sometimes didn't even make $6 a week. And you can imagine the savings drained quickly. Sure, sure. Every step I was cared for, every step I was taught. And, and this is how angels work. You know, it's yes. not that... Let's hand talk about how do angels work. <laughs> they don't always just hand you a plan. You know, I've argued with them incessantly. Why don't you just give me a plan and lay it out so I can follow it? I was an engineering planner. <laughs> and they said, Anne, there's 7 billion people on the planet, each one with free will. They're making new choices with every breath. If we gave you a plan, it would be outdated in less than three seconds. <laughs> so, because yeah. everybody's making choices. So instead, what we do is we give you guidance in the moment. Mm -hmm. And here's a, a little tidbit on how angels work versus humans. Angels don't just respond to our words and our pleas and our requests. They respond to our energy. Uh, you know, we uh, think of them as people. They're not people. They're very pure vibrations 
I from that. the divine, whatever you call that. Right. So, for example, Archangel Michael is God's truth and protection, and he takes a form for our comfort. You know, he could show up as one heck of a hunk, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone who's mm -hmm. ever worked with him is like, yum, yum, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Raphael, <laughs> the healer, is God's healing. Gabriel is God's communication, and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And, and different ones come with different vibrations of, of God's pure love. It would be as if you and I could take like all the compassion in our hearts and give it a form. Sure. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So they are energetic beings. They're the pure love of God. They yes. are designed to respond to any loving energy we put out. Now, people say, well, what if I'm pissed? What if I'm in a bad space? Are the angels going to ignore me? And I say, not if you ask for help and comfort. Ask. Because help and comfort self-love. Mm -hmm. You know, if a little child is in a foul mood throwing a tantrum, but they come up and they say, I want a hug. Yes. That's self-love. Yes. You've got to respond to that. You yes. know, the, the goodness in you has to respond to that. Yes, yes. And so the angels, by their very nature, respond to the loving vibrations we put out. They cannot respond to our fearful energy. So, for example, if, if you're like, hurry up, hurry up, I need a better job because I'm afraid I won't have enough money. Well, they can help to a degree because it's self-love to want to get yourself in a better space, but you're just immersed in fear at that moment so it's like they're trying to get through with love but your fear is so thick yes so far better to come to them like a child and say you know what i'm afraid i want comfort could you help me get rid of this fear so that i can be open to that new job that i know god wants to bring me because i'm loved to be surrendering and to be transparently free mm -hmm. free to trust yeah back you know, to that child that you're talking about to trust well your know, faith my darling, your faith in those initial months or years of developing, you know, your work uh, and as a serv as a person of service and also but to support yourself and to be going through your savings. That's such a tremendous act of surrender and faith. So congratulations, I, you know, my goodness. Well Thank you. I just, I, yeah. I went kicking and screaming. I wish I could say I was more graceful, but you know, I had my moments of faith. I chose faith. I'll put it that way. I kept I choosing. That. I didn't feel it all the time. We don't always feel it, but we can choose. Let's talk about another way, another tool that you have for helping people to connect with their angels. You have books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, the, the funny part is I have not written a book yet on how to connect with angels. I've written about how I did it, but and you and, have your newsletter, but your yeah. newsletter every week is this, these tools. Mm -hmm. That's a the, book already, the, you know, easiest way to connect with your angels. Honestly, yes. is to get in the morning and give them your honey do list, <laughs> you know, honey, I need help with this. I need help with that. I get up in the mornings, and it's like, okay, I've got this, 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 and this to do today. And could you please help me do that and do it gracefully and do it in a loving way? When you talk about putting together your honey-do list, you're also, in your work, helping us to align our energy with And it can be energy. as simple as, yeah, I mean, there are days when I'm like, angels, I'm in a foul mood. You know, there's some days we're human. And I and and instead of just trying to be holy and trying not to be in that mood, right? They right. told me give it to them. So I'll say, okay, I'm giving you all my negativity and my bad energy and my sadness and my anger. I'm giving it to you because I know you can just. It's just dense energy. It's just scraggly dense energy. If you could see it, you know, like mm -hmm. a cloud. Mm -hmm. So I'm handing it to them and I'm saying recycle. And I love that. They'll pour the love into it and 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 they they say, you know what? We want to help you with this. And they always say, come as you are, don't come as you think you should be, because we can't work with falsity. You know, I've got a friend, I'll have to hook you up with her, Summer Bacon. She's an amazing channel. And I've seen her, you know, channel this wonderful spirit in a room, and, and uh, somebody's name will get picked, and the spirit will say, how are you doing? And they'll say, oh, fine. And he'll say, we don't believe you, and we can't work with you until you're honest. Uh huh. And uh -huh. so finally, well, yeah, it's been hard. And they say, okay, now we can work with you. Because if you put up this veneer, that says, I have to be perfect. What is that at its core but a lack of self-worth? It's saying I'm not perfect the way I already am. Yeah. It's saying I don't deserve help. I have to come to you with the holier than thou. And the angels are saying, please be real because that's like a little child. It's innocent. It's acknowledging you need help. Yes. It's opening up to the help that really wants to get to you. And it's not that different with humans. You know, working with angels actually teaches me how to react and interact with humans better. If yes. somebody comes up to you and says, how are you? And you go, I'm fine. Oh. 
the end, right? Yeah, the- uh, that's a moment denied, isn't it? A moment of connection denied. If you feel an authentic care and concern, then you trust that person right. to, with what's go- really going on. And if you don't, you don't. I mean, that's how yeah, we operate so. in our lives. But your, what you're clarifying for me, too, is that with this openness and the spirit and the loving heart and the vulnerability of a child, we open our hearts to ask for help and to communicate what's going on with our lives to our angels because allow them to take that on and give it up and let that be recycled because what I love about your spirit and your understanding and maybe I'm just projecting this so tell me if I'm wrong but you as an engineer you're and in an electrical engineer your understanding of energy and how energy transmutes mm-hmm. that to me I see I, feel, I find so clear with you and well, thank you. I, you're welcome. I think thank that's you. why I went through all that because, uh, you know, it's if you had a bunch of garbage and you threw it in a fire, it turns to heat and, and fuel. Yes. And we can ask the angels to take our garbage, you know, our dense energy. And, and literally, sometimes in my office, for example, I'll tell someone, breathe into your solar plexus, your stomach area, because that's where we tend to hold a lot of our junk. You know, not always, but often our emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, imagine you could just breathe into there and drain it all out like muddy water through your hands. And I'll hold their hands and I'll let them just pull it out through me. And the angels just pull it up and out through my top of my head. And all of a sudden they feel better. And then I feel this beautiful heat coming down through me and out of my hands, like clean water, oh, you know, so, oh. and, and it fills them and we can do this remote. It doesn't have to be in person. Yes. And, and people can do it with their own angels. They can literally breathe all their garbage into their stomach. Then imagine they're handing a ball of junk to their angels, you know, like coming out of their stomach. And and this is what the Tai Chi people do. And the martial artists do is they, they, they drain out that nasty energy um, also. So you can find this in various traditions, but I, I just understand it a little more. It's, it's recycling. It's recycling. Now, and you, do you have meditations that people I, can you, go to? Where are they? Uh, they're on my website again, visions of And yeah. I yeah. have, Three specifically that the angels gave me years ago. There are three CDs. Each CD has two meditations on it that total an hour. I get it. Okay. Each one is ten dollars for a download or fifteen for a CD. Oh, great. Okay, good. I love the I love the the time that we take to meditate is such a gift that we give ourselves in our horrendously busy and um, yeah. uh, I'm just going to say it, fiercely intense. It feels right now fiercely intense. It is. What's going on in our world? Um, I'm going to just blast you with this question, which is, can you tell me and tell our listeners where are the big messages that we need to hear right now in terms of what's going on in the world and what? Okay. And it's funny because their messages are rather timeless, no matter what's going on in the world. Thank you. Okay. Everything is always moving towards greater love, no matter how awful it looks. Great. For example. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) always been bigotry and corruption. There's always been greed. It's always been there since ancient Egypt and beyond, right? Uh But what's happening now is we have it right in front of us to take a look at. Yep. We have it iconified. We have it on the internet. We have it on our cell phones. We can see everything immediately. Mm-hmm. And the angels say, so when we look at people who are bigoted or in greed or whatever it is out there or at war with one another, the angels say, that's our chance to say, do we want to promote that vibration within ourselves or not? You know, do we want to hate the haters? Do we want to be bigoted against the bigotry? Yes. You know? And the angels say, so if you don't like someone in public, for example, they said, by all means, you don't have to like everybody. We weren't designed to, you know, the cheetahs mm-hmm. and the lions don't generally hang out and have coffee. <laughs> you know, yeah. things, there are things that don't get along, but the angels say, pray for their upliftment. Mm-hmm. I have clients that by profession are activists and they're very loving people and they want to do it with love. And so in their case, they're not fearful. You know, the angels have coached them. Don't live in fear. Come with the desire to share a better perspective. There you go. You know, come with there love. There you go. Because we've never, ever, ever made change in this world, ever as a human race, by hating the people we want to change, by telling them they're wrong. Right. You know, Compassion. the ones who have lasting change are the Christs and the Gandhis and the, the people mm-hmm. that taught through their love. 
Martin Luther King. Yeah. Oh, Tomorrow. Yeah. There wait. you are. You know, it's, it's, we teach through our love because when somebody is able to be loving in the face of adversity, all of a sudden the angry, greedy, nasty people look at them and it kind of touches something really deep in their hearts and they either run in fear from it and leave you alone. And this mm -hmm. is in your personal life too. If you could be loving to the unloving, they'll either leave you alone or they'll attack a little bit more and give up and change, you know, but, but eventually love will win. I'm going to talk a little bit about the glitch only in that I, one of the ways that I'm connecting with you so powerfully is through your message of self-love and where self-love allows us to get back to a, a childlike state of in love, being love and being connected. Mm -hmm. Um, now we fall out of love our, with ourselves for so many reasons and enter in the life of trying to be perfect. And I feel sometimes that women struggle with that more. They do. And, um, okay. you know, Eve, Eve ate the apple. It's all our fault and we have to make it up for infinity, right? <laughs> for eternity. Thank you. Yeah. But we are lesser than. Yeah. Yes. That's the message. Now. I did a lot of reading on that years ago because, you know, I wanted to understand where this come from. And a lot of it came from early political um, factions and religious, you know, misuse. I'll put it that way. Uh -huh. Because if you go way back in history, there was an understanding of God as a goddess. Because uh -huh. they would look at Mother Earth and they would see nature and they would say nature shows us what God is like. God is cooperative. God is providing. God is supportive. You know, when you look at that. Uh, God the, is beautiful. The nurturing aspect of yes. God. Yes. And then there was the introduction of a dominating, fear-based male aspect of God. And the angels say the true divine masculine is that which carries out, you know, it's the head carrying out the heart's dictates. Mm -hmm. So women, however, when those old uh, patriarchal religions were brought into play, were, you know, downplayed, denigrated. And that's not what, if you look at what Jesus came to teach, he had men and women around him equally. Mm -hmm. He was a very loving man who listened to the dictates of his heart, the feminine energy, and carried it out with his masculinity. So he was balanced. Yeah. But what people have done with this, unfortunately, have, you know, they've twisted it. And so women have been made to feel inferior. And what I find is that women should neither feel inferior nor you know, superior, but each of us really has the task of going within and marrying the head and the heart. Yes. And this is when we have a dream or a vision and we start doing something about it. Like you're doing with the glitch. You had this dream and vision and you got the guidance and you, you got the, the kind of the motivation to go ahead with it and you're doing it. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And that vibration of being balanced in your heart and your head is going to attract the support for it. You know, you asked for a bit of a channeling. Um, I, I just kept hearing they, they, they never make it generic. They always talk to the host. Okay. Oh, I'm, I didn't know that. I'm not lucky me. <laughs> make it for everybody too. But what you're up to, they said, is very much what a child does. A child creates something beautiful based in their heart. You know, a child might create an art project or a child might you know, write something. And, and, and what's the first thing they do? They want to show everyone. I did something wonderful. I want to share it. Yes. And so by asking for help, when something comes from your heart and you're saying, look what I do, look what I did. The angels say, that's not an arrogance. That's not saying you're better or worse. The kids don't care if they drew the best picture, if they did the best dance or wrote the best paragraph. They have no concern about comparisons. And the angels say, so in your innocence of saying, look, I've got this awesome movie. It's going to help people and to speak about it with enthusiasm and excitement to everybody you feel guided to talk to. Right. They say, that's where the doors are going to continue to open for you. That's where you're going to promote it. You don't have to worry about getting support. You just have to shine it out there. They said, and the support will be brought by your willingness to have that sort of attention. This is exactly how the angels work is they'll, they'll, Anyone who's a crack open to love, you know, even like this woman, she just, she just wants to fix her life and, and she's probably desperate and she's probably opened the door enough to say, I want help, you know, oh. and what comes through is help for her, a demonstration for the entire community, growth for the people who are stuck, you know, yeah. angels don't just stop at one person, you know, they're not just helping Anne. You know, when I, when I pray and I go through something really hard and I ask for help and I get put through this intense lesson, but I learn it, then I can help others. And their message to you is really what they would say to everyone. When you're good at something, own it proudly. It's not about being better or worse. And they wish we wouldn't compare. They oh, say, 
if you know if you're a good artist for example that doesn't mean you have to be better or worse than anybody else you just say to the the world i love art i'm good at it like mm -hmm. a kid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like a kid and and to say this movie is going to touch hearts and lives it, it's truth yeah and to say it was inspired and it just came to me and it's taken me years to get to the point where i could do it that's truth and i want to get everybody on board who's ever felt hopeless and i want to get everybody on board who's ever you know doubted whether or not they're loved Mm -hmm. And I want this uh -huh. to tell everyone that their love and help is there for them. And the angels say, you start talking like that, you're going to get, and you are, and that's going to bring people to it. And that applies to everyone listening. Whatever it is you want help with, don't, I mean, use discernment. There are people you're not going to share your heart with because they're just too stuck and, you know, you sense that. Mm -hmm. But somebody comes up to you and says, what's going on in your life and who are you? You know, I used to say, people used to come to me and say, what do you do for a living? And I'd say, I'm, I'm a counselor. You know, <laughs> I'm a counselor out of the side of your mouth. Yep. Uh -huh. People and I channel an energy that catalyzes miracles at times and they go, what? You know, and they either run from me or they. Always I, okay, stop. I catalyze. Oh, wait, I channel, I channel an energy that sometimes catalyzes miracles. Sometimes okay. I channel an energy that sometimes catalyzes miracles. Mm -hmm. Got it. And yeah. I just say it. And, and, you know, and it's like, here I am like a kid. Here I am, and people are either going to run from you or not. You know, I, I had a beautiful demonstration of this. My, I am friends with Robin Miller, who's an amazing New Age musician, Channel's yes. Angel. And I was standing outside where he was playing outside one day, and this little girl comes up to him. And, I mean, she must have been three, and she goes, I can do yoga, I can dance. And she's showing off, and <laughs> so cute. And she's dancing to his music, making everyone in the vicinity happy. There were 20 people that must have stopped to watch this joyous child. Uh... And she toddles on up to him. Mind you, he's played music. He's a virtuoso for 50 years. She goes, next year, I will help you because I'm going to learn a piano. <laughs> <laughs> there it is right there. How can you not love that? How can you not support that? Everybody in the, in the whole vicinity wanted to donate to her. <laughs> so... And oh, it, and it's oh. of joyfully mm. offering what it is we care about, what it is we have to offer. A rose doesn't bloom to get affection and attention. It blooms because it's in it. And by virtue of the fact that it just chooses to be its beautiful self, it gets the attention. And so whatever is in your heart out there, whether it's your movie or me doing my work or somebody being a wonderful mom and caring about their children, whatever's in there, they said, bloom, show the world. Oh, and, they said, and then you'll get the attention from those who, who can admire that. And others will say, my God, there's too many thorns and they'll walk away. <laughs> you know? But that's all right. So That's they said, all right. We don't need yeah. we don't need to to do anything we do for attention. They said, but if you do what you love, you'll get the attention and the support and and the resources. And if you if you're willing to own it, because the angels say we don't do worthy and unworthy. That's not even a concept. We we can we understand it from your human point of view, mm -hmm. but we don't understand it from our point of view because you're all worthy in our minds. Yes. No matter what. Yes. And that, again, that's another message in your movie that this woman, you know, she, she went to prison and she probably doesn't feel worthy. And the angels, no. we know who you really are. You know, if there's one thing they could say to all of you, it's we know who you are. You know, you're the love and the light of God that got molded into this human form and wants to express that light and love somehow in this world. Right. And please talk about your gazing. Oh, okay. Um, this started happening. There's a, uh, I'll have to give people a little history quickly yeah for uh, four years friends and, and clients told me about a gentleman from croatia named bratso mm -hmm. because i love energy and yes. he happens to channel an energy just through his eyes people look at him and they heal yes. from fatal diseases and addictions and financial problems and he does online sessions for free at uh it's b-r-a-c-o dash tv dot me m-e anyhow and he's doing some in, a few, I think, a few weeks. So it's for free. You just watch for free. Anyhow, he came to the U.S. And I just couldn't go and couldn't go until one day my hairdresser smacks me. I was whining that I missed him the day before. I was in my hairdresser's chair. And she said, he's still here. You should go. In Arizona. In Arizona. So uh -huh. I had a wet head and I had a full day. But I heard the angels saying, go. So hmm. paid her and ran with the wet head. <laughs> yep. Showed up at the hotel. Yep. Stood in, you know, in an audience with hundreds of people, not yep. exactly knowing what to expect. And when he came out, beautiful bright light was pouring off him. And I saw things I only saw in meditations and visions prior. The light touching people and their light expanded. Mm -hmm. And um, I went home and the following week, my angel said, you're going to do this. And I went, ah. <laughs> you 
Sure. So I now, I, I'll just skip all the in between. I now yes. surrender to this energy and I get on Facebook live streaming from time to time. I try to do it once every month or two. Once every month, a live stream, Anne's gaze, correct? Yeah. I have also been seeing the gaze, had Bratzo's gaze, mm -hmm. so I know exactly what you're talking about and exactly the experience of the light and the sheer love that pours from him. So please, everyone, give yourself the gift of experiencing Anne's gaze. Well, thank you. It humbles me, too. I, I just I, email from a person yesterday and she said her neck and throat and everything else just suddenly healed and it was you know I, I it's humbling allow yourself to trust that there's a connection and that there's a spirit and that there's an energy inside of you just begging to yeah. be connected absolutely the angels say we stand right beside people just whispering i'm here i'm here just oh. ask for help just ask for help and um you know, the minute you open that door, you know, my big joke is you open the door a crack and God will pour into your life. You know? Ah, I love and that. Great, what a great phrase. The slightest acknowledgement of, of self-worth could simply be, you know, self-worth doesn't always have to look like, oh, yeah, I'm great. Self-worth sometimes looks like I feel like I suck today, but I want help. <sighs> you know, and that's self-worth. The angels say if we could just be natural, you know, do what comes to us naturally. There are people who come to my office and... Um, Honestly, I don't even know why they see an angel reader. They're like, oh, everything's fine. And I said, okay. And so they get a, a gentle meeting with some tips. But there are people who come to my office and they go, you know what? I really need help with this area in life. And it just pours through because they've opened the door a crack. And you can do that in your personal life. You know, whether people hear angels or get their messages. I mean, I do teach all that. But even if you don't ever care about hearing them, if you just ask for help, try it. I just tell do an experiment. Get up in the morning and ask for help with a few things and see what happens. I had a woman. Um, she watched episode one of my angel show, Anne and the Angels, uh -huh. and she heard the message, ask for help. And so she did. She said, I really need some help with finances. Now, in her case, we hadn't even covered how to hear them. Yeah. But she had the, oh, wow, I have a check due to me from some government agency. I forget that, that I haven't collected, and it's not going to help me with my bigger bills, but I should at least call. It just popped in her head, right? Yeah, yeah. So she calls, and the lady on the other end of the phone was so helpful and said, did you know you have some other money due to you? <laughs> 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 so there it was, you know, and, uh -huh. and this is how they work. They just pop little thoughts in your head, or somebody comes and says something to you that you go, hmm, you know, so they can work through anything at billboards, radios. Also, back back to this concept uh, again, and I really want you to write a book. Okay, I'm going to ask you, please write this book because we need the tools. We need the tools. We need your thinking. We need your advice because back to this is how angels think. Angels live in reminding us that we have a world of abundance, and that abundance is... Um, it's license plates and it's stop signs and the abundance is in words and the abundance is in phone calls and in trees and in birds and in cardinals and everywhere. Everywhere is abundance. And when our spirits can be opened up and match with that, wow, you have transmission complete, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, I did a whole series of the end and the angels. I call it a romance of life. It's series five. And it's really about finding that love everywhere. Cause you know, I, and what spurred this inside of me was so many people are lonely. So many people, oh, yeah. you know, are looking for the one. Well, the one lives in everything and everyone. And I understand we want a human companion, but you can fall madly in love with life and have that experience of love all the time, every day. And, you know, we fall out of it. I'm human. I do too. But you can get back to it real quickly. And one of the reasons that, you know, I'm able to kind of give as much as I do is because I fill the well by by receiving the love of the universe. And, you know, and sometimes, it, like you said, it's the bird song. And people go, it's just a bird. But why? If you feel the vibration of love, that's love. The angels say, there's no scale to love. It's it's either love or it's not love. You know, they once said, Anne, we don't care if you feel love for a man, a chair, or a squirrel. But if you feel love, you feel love. Uh -huh. You know, and that's love. Uh -huh. So it's there. It's everywhere. And the angels do remind us, we love you. The universe loves you. You know, sometimes it's buried more deeply, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What you bring to your life, Anne, is full speed ahead. Yeah. And I love that. I love that full speed ahead. And I want... 
everyone who has an, any instinct to crack open that door, to crack open Anne's website, Anne's work, Anne's all of the different tools she offers, spend some time with Anne Albers, please, just as you spent time with us now. And thank you for all you do, and let Honey. me know movies out. <laughs> yeah, onward. All right. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you, babe. Bye bye. If you liked this recording and benefited from it, please, for heaven's sake, share it with your friends. If you loved it and want to hear more, go to theglitchmovie.com forward slash how to connect with angels, where you can listen and subscribe. Thank you so much.